there's an estimated sextillion copepods in the global ocean. So that's a one with 21 zeros at the end of it. And that's two orders of magnitude more than all of the insects on land. And they're the most abundant group of multicellular animals on the earth. And that's why we're here to study them. Zooplankton is a really diverse group of animals that live in the water column in the ocean. The zooplankton in general is dominated by a group of animals called copepods. These are crustaceans, so relatives of crabs and lobsters and so on. They're the link in the food chain between uh, the plants and fish and the bigger animals that we might like to harvest. Really also important for how the um, ocean interacts with the climate. Carbon dioxide it absorbs into the surface ocean, the phytoplankton convert that into their tissues. Then the zooplankton come along and eat that. And a lot of that carbon within their tissues from the atmosphere ultimately uh, comes out the backside of zooplankton's poo, sinks down to the deep ocean, transporting carbon and that stores it away from the atmosphere. So without this whole system, it's estimated that atmospheric CO2 levels would be about 50% higher than they are right now. And so we're interested in looking at how zooplankton within this biological system export carbon to understand is this carbon being converted back to CO2 in surface waters or can be stored for a long time? So zooplankton have a kind of a critical role in the transfer and the sequestration of this carbon in our system. And better understanding this whole system can help better predict climate models in the future. One of the key things with the, the plankton is that their uh, metabolism is driven directly by the temperature. Uh, increasing atmospheric CO2 concentrations are causing the planet to warm and that's causing uh, all kinds of changes in the plankton. And we don't understand how a warming ocean might influence the way in which they influence uh, the fate of carbon. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the surface ocean is also increasing. That changes the ocean pH. We know that zooplankton can be sensitive to ocean pH, uh, particularly the, the animals that produce calcium carbonate shells, because they're, they corrode in an acidic ocean. key roles across all three parts of biocarbon is understanding how much these animals are actually consuming in terms of carbon, where does that carbon go, and how does the relationship between zooplankton and phytoplankton change as at different parts of the year, and how that influences the flux of carbon into the deep ocean. So there's a general trend in biology that in warmer oceans things are smaller, so in the kind of zooplankton world, our largest plankton are found at the poles and our smallest plankton are found closest to the equator. And so you can think of in a kind of context of global oceans, if all of our oceans are getting warmer, then all of our zooplankton are getting smaller. And the kind of wider impacts of that are that if you think of the base of your food pyramid in the ocean, you have phytoplankton at the absolute bottom and then your zooplankton. So if both of these groups are decreasing in size and decreasing in energy content, therefore, then everything above them, so your fish, your whales, even us, we're all going to be impacted by the fact that the bottom of the food chain is getting smaller and less nutritious. But when we can't get fish in the supermarkets because the fish stocks have collapsed, because the zooplankton aren't there anymore, then that's how it's going to start impacting us. With a population so vast, they're going to be having an important role in how the ocean functions in terms of uh, transferring energy up the food chain to fish and things that we will harvest. But they're also having this huge impact on how much carbon is stored into the deep ocean via these, the, the poo that they produce. It's a massive global function that we need to understand if we want to understand future climate.